Hey everyone, Derek here. I know it's been a minute, but I hope you're all staying happy and healthy wherever you are. In this one, let's jump back into some more Python and Pandas tutorial content. I want to show you some of the basics, so if you're just starting out in Pandas, maybe this video will be helpful to you. Let's jump right in. Starting out, if you're just learning Pandas, what it is is a great tool so we can analyze and work with spreadsheet data inside of Python. What that means is we don't have to use an Excel spreadsheet to do a lot of the actions that we were doing before, but instead we can use Python to automatically do a bunch of these actions for us. The cool part about using Python is that we can reuse the code between different workbooks. So if we're doing very repetitive actions inside Excel, we can automate these tasks by using Python. Let's look at an Excel spreadsheet and I'll link this spreadsheet down below. So if you want to use it as well, it'll be there. All this is, is the price of gold monthly. So let's work with this notebook. And like I said, open it up and work along with me if you want to. Getting started, we'll open up an editor of your choice and then we'll create a new Python file. Now that we have this, if we already have pandas installed, we can just go ahead and import it as PD. So we could say import pandas as PD. If you don't have pandas pip installed, go ahead and do that with the command at the bottom left of the screen. Now, what we can do is we can read in our CSV file or Excel sheet. We'll call it DF gold prices. And this will just be equal to that pandas library. And we'll use a method called read and then whatever we need here. If you're using Excel, this will be read Excel. For us, I believe this sheet is technically a CSV. Yep, monthly gold prices dot CSV. So we'll use a method called read CSV. Now we need to pass in the path to that CSV worksheet. For me, since I'm working in the same directory, all of this is on my desktop, then I can just use the name of that file. So monthly gold prices dot CSV. If this was inside some folder, say your documents, then it might look something like this. Like I said, I'm in the same directory, so I'll just leave it as this. Now to verify that we have this read in, let's look at a few methods of viewing data. We can view data inside of pandas data frame by saying something like print. And then we have a couple of different methods we can use. There's one of head that we can pass in the number of lines at the beginning of our data frame that we want to view. There's also tail. So this will view the last 10 lines or we could just print the whole thing. For this, let's say tail, and then we'll pull in the last 20 entries. Now we can open up our terminal or PowerShell, depending on your operating system, and we can execute our code. We'll be sure to save it before we execute, and we get back the result to our terminal. These are the last 10 entries in our CSV, where we have the date and the price of gold. As you can see, a pandas data frame looks very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. This is on purpose, that way we can work with this data just like how we would in Excel, except programmatically. Great, so we have that down. Now let's take a look at a simple operation of selecting a column in our worksheet. What we can do to view a column in our worksheet, we can say something like print, we'll access our data frame, which is this variable name, We'll reference that, and then what we do is we access it by indexing out a key. What a key or a label is in a pandas data frame is just what we call the heading of each of our columns. So we have a date and a price in this one. If we wanted to say date, we could just view all this information here. So we'll go ahead and run that, and we should only get back the date column now, which is what we get. So let's go ahead and assign this as a variable. That way we can use it later on in our script. So we'll say dates will be equal to that column. Prices will be the same thing. So we'll say gold prices, and then we'll reference that column, which I believe is just called price. It is, so price. Now let's take a look at how we can do simple operations on these columns if we need to. So let's say, simple operations and let's do a simple operation of determining a price that we may want to buy gold at so let's say that we want to buy gold at 90 percent of the value that way we make a profit 
we could say something like df gold prices. So this is that same data frame that we're working with. And then what we can do is say buy price. This isn't a column that we already have. So what pandas will do for us is create a new column with this header of buy price. In this column, we need to make sure is the same length as these columns. We can do that very easily by using one of those columns. So we can say prices, and if we want to buy a 90% of the value, we could say times 0.9. This is a pretty cool feature because we can do simple math operations very quickly and create new columns. So simple math works just like this. We can do division, subtraction, addition, and a lot more. So we'll just leave it as multiplication for right now. All right, so now that we have that, let's look at some more functions. Let's do something simple. So we'll say DF gold prices, and let's look at the column of price. We'll make sure that's capitalized. And there's a bunch of different functions that we can use. We have things like mean, we have mode. For this one, let's look at the max gold price, saving that and running it. Executing that, we see that we get back the maximum gold price of our data, which if our data continued, would probably be today. But in our data, it looks like the maximum gold price comes from the last entry. Finally, I want to show you one last tool that you can use and one of the awesome reasons why I like using pandas. It's very simple to clean your data to whatever formats you need. As you can see, here we have 2020-07. Let's see if we can get rid of that dash very simply. We'll say something like DF gold prices. We'll access that date column, which is just the heading. So date right here. Now let's say this will be equal to gold prices date. So here we created a new column by doing this and then assigning a method. Since we already have this column here, all we're doing is overriding the previous one with some method applied to it. We'll use a string method of replace. And all this is doing is saying, what do you want to replace? For us, we want to replace a dash. And to get rid of it, let's say that we want either an empty string, we could have a space or anything else. I'll just leave it as an empty string. So I will expect that the final result will be 202007. No spaces and no dash. Finally, going down and saying print DF gold prices, we should get back that result, which we do. We also see that we get back that gold purchase price that we set right here. Great, since this is a beginning tutorial for anyone getting started into pandas, I wanted to be sure to show you how we could view data, how we can manipulate data, and how we could do some data cleaning. I also think that if you're trying to replace your Excel workload, that you should also know how to create some graphs from your data. There's a bunch of different libraries that we can use to graph data, including pandas itself. For me, I like Plotly, so I'll import plotly.express as px. So the usual way to do this is to create a variable called figure. Then we'll use that plotly express library, which we called px. Then from that, we can say what type of graph that we want. In this instance, it looks like that we have a date and one variable that we want to plot. So that means we should probably use a line plot. Using Plotly is pretty easy. So all we have to do as the first argument is to say our data that we want to use, which is data frame gold prices. Then from our data frame, we can say what our X value is. In this instance, we've already pulled that column out as dates, so we'll use that variable that we created here, down here for the x value, and then y will be this one. So we have y equal prices. Finally, we can set a title if we want to. So we'll say gold prices over time. And with one line of Python code, we've already created our graph. This just creates it, so we need to be sure to show it as well. So our graph has a method of show, that we can use. So we'll save this in executor code and this graph pulled up over in my browser. So let me pull it over here. And this is what the gold prices 
over time looks like. Briefly taking a look at this graph, one of the reasons why I like it is we're able to zoom in and have very dynamic graphs that we can play with whenever we create them. And that's pretty much it for this one. Like I said, these are just beginning techniques, and I hope it shows you enough to where you can start using pandas on your own. I'll be coming out with more videos on more advanced techniques that we can do in the future. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let me know and I'll get back to you. Until next time.